We are still early in the process of editing a video with Final Cut Pro 10, but I wanted to take this time to talk about preferences. Most apps that you use in macOS have preferences. To access them, go up to the menu bar and click on the app name, in this case Final Cut Pro. Then go down and click on Preferences. You could also use the shortcut Command Comma. The preferences are things that by default are set the way you'll currently see them because we haven't made any changes to them. But it's good to understand that these are here. If you don't know, you can change a way that Final Cut uh, works and displays things. You may never come here and make those actual changes. So I just wanted to give a brief overview of our preferences. And then if you want, you can always go back and make changes to these later on. For this course, I'm going to keep almost everything here the default, because that's the most common thing that you're going to be working with. But if you want to make a change here, just understand my settings are, are probably going to be set to the default settings as opposed to any custom preferences. So we're under the general tab here. But I'm actually going to skip over to the import tab for just a second. Because notice what we have here is all of those options we just took a look at in the previous video. We have how the files are going to be set, that it's going to create those keywords from finder tags and folders. Uh, we, we even went in and, and enabled the option to create proxy media. And notice it set that as the default. So if you're, for example, importing content and you find you're never wanting to create keywords, you can go into the preferences here and uncheck these options. And then you don't have to do that every single time you import media. So that's an example of some of the preferences that are available inside of Final Cut Pro. Some of the other ones we have, if we go back to the general tab, we have how our time code is going to be displayed, which right now is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. That's what we see down here. Some people like to see this as just frames, and we can change that. And then you'll notice down here we see the frame number. If I change it to seconds, we see the number of seconds. So this is all preference. Some people like to see uh, the frames or, or another option here. Some people with audio are working with subframes. So you get those options to change the time display. As you work with Final Cut, you're going to see different uh, windows come up that are essentially warning you about something, or maybe it's an error message. And some of them you can choose to never show again, or do other options. You get this option here to reset those warnings. We also have audio units, which you could validate the next time Final Cut opens. Color correction, by default, is using the color board. We're going to see that a lot in a later video, but many people like to use the newer color wheels or even color curves. You can set the default here. And then we have our inspector unit, which is using pixels, but you can also change this to percentages if you wanted to. I personally like the pixel option, so I usually keep that. And now let's look at the editing tab. Under editing, you have a couple options. Some big ones here at the bottom that I find a lot of people like to change, which is the duration of your default uh, transitions and still images that you're adding. But if you ever add a still image to your project, it's going to be four seconds long. If you find you're always changing this to three seconds or a different time, you can make that change here. Same thing with transition. You have how long transitions are going to be. One second for a lot of people is pretty short, so you can make that change here if you want a different length for the duration. And again, this is just the default. When you had added initially what's that transition or still frame going to be, you can always go in here and, and adjust it later on, or you can change it here in the preferences. We have the option to show the reference waveforms, which we'll ex uh, look at this in when we look at audio, but that's something I usually keep enabled. And then for the timeline, you can show detailed trimming feedback and the position of the playhead after uh, an editing operation. So as you're making changes, the more trimming feedback you have, uh, what this essentially is doing is just visually showing you more feedback, more stuff on the screen, and it can help make your edits uh, more clear as far as what you're doing. Some people don't like all the, the things they see, but... For this course, keep that enabled. It's going to be very helpful. And then same thing, after you make a change or an edit, you might delete a clip or make an adjustment. It's going to position the playhead after the edit, but you can always uncheck this and then it'll keep it uh, at its current position. 
Again, all this I keep at the default and you'll just get used to the way that that works. The next preference is our playback. And big one here at the bottom we have, which is the background render. So just like we saw our background task window when the importing is, is going on, Final Cut renders behind the scenes. And it's gonna automatically have that enabled and start after a certain amount of seconds. And this is a certain amount of time where you're not editing, where you're not scrubbing on a clip or making another change. So I do recommend having background render enabled in most cases, um, because that way you're taking advantage of the performance of your computer. When you stop for just a few seconds scrubbing on the timeline, let's say you get a phone call, you're going and talking, Final Cut then is working for you and rendering if it needs to. So we have some other options here for how it's gonna play back. It's gonna create optimized media for multicam clips if you use the multicam feature. You can have a warning show up if drop frames are detected and it'll stop the playback and warn you. That can be very, uh, you know, really intrusive into your editing uh, and your the steps you're going through because it's, it literally stops the playback. But some people want to be warned when there are drop frames so that they can see the quality of the video. Uh, you'll see these dialogues as you start to work with Final Cut, and if they become annoying, you can always go in and enable, enable them. Uh, we do see drop frames as well, either due to disk performance, uh, or if you're using a VR headset, if you're getting into 360 projects, you can get these warnings as well. And drop frames, all that means is when you're playing the video, the computer couldn't process and show you the clips with every single frame being played back. And so it had to drop frames in order to play back at the real time when you were, when you were watching that clip. So um, not too important for most editors, but if you are working on a slower computer or even working with a fast computer, you're just rendering in 8K or, or higher end stuff, that's where using that proxy media or the optimized media can definitely help out. And then if you're using HDR clips and video, uh, you can see the raw values. We're not gonna be talking too much about that in this course, but you have that option there as well. And there is a keyboard shortcut and a menu item to play around in edit. So this pre-roll duration and post-roll duration is how much time before and after the edit, kind of pre meaning before the edit point or whatever you're playing around, and then how much time after. Two seconds uh, is the default for a reason. It's probably the most common amount of time, but you can go in and change this uh, duration. And then we have a player background, which right now is black, but you can change that to be white or checkerboard. This is the player we see up here. Um, right now there is no background, so then you're not seeing any change there. The default is definitely black. Uh, that's where most editors I find using Final Cut like to, to have a black background. Uh, but it can be very helpful to see a checkerboard or even a white background instead of black, and you get that option here in Preferences. And the last option here, AV Output. Uh, this is if you have a dedicated monitor for outputting what you see back here in the viewer to that extra monitor. Um, we can see right now if I click here, it says None Found. There is nothing connected to this iMac currently that would allow us to output to a monitor. But if you have a setup that includes a dedicated monitor for uh, kind of validating your footage and, and viewing it, you'll get that option here and you can change that. We looked at the import preferences already. And then the last option here we have is destinations. So we're gonna look at this a lot more down the road when we're done with our project and ready to share it to others. But these are the default shared destinations. And many people, if not everyone that's editing with Final Cut should go in here in my opinion, and modify these because the defaults are great. I find it's very frequent that I'm exporting the master file and even the Apple device option. Uh, but uh, you, know, you might not be ever sharing to a DVD anymore. You may never share to Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo. So you, you do have options in here that you may never use. So if you're not using them, just get rid of them from this menu. And you can modify this right now if you want to. All you need to do is select the option uh, with the little picture here. That'll select it, and then at the lower left corner, you can hit the minus to remove one of these shared destinations. I am going to keep them as the default here for now, but you could select any of these destinations, and then on the right side, you have all of the settings that are used. So for example, when you share to a master file, which right now is set to the default, 
It shares with a video codec that's the same as the source, meaning the original source media. Uh, but a lot of times I want to share as an H.264 file, so I can actually go and change that here in the settings. And then anytime I share as master file, it's going to use a video codec of H.264. So this would no longer be the default settings, but um, for this, the original, but it's our default share destination. Um, but that's those what you can do here in share destinations. You can set those up. And again, if this is kind of a little bit confusing, it should be. Uh, we haven't looked at sharing or any of these options and why you'd want to use them, but we are going to see that a lot more down the road. So when you see any of these preferences here, the reason I'm showing you this is you might be doing something later on and you're like, oh yeah, I remember when he was looking at playback, we had an option to change that pre-roll and post-roll duration. Or for our share destinations, I remember we could ch change what's showing up in that menu. So that's why I like to show these preferences. You know, it's something that if you find you're doing something over and over again that seems a little weird, you're changing a setting or, or something else in the way that you're editing, don't hesitate, go back here into preferences and you might find you can change something and save a couple seconds of always having to click on a certain button there. Uh, but that's why I like showing those. Um, I do recommend for now keeping that stuff at the default because especially for this course, everything is gonna be set to the default. And so if something act is acting differently on your machine, it may be because you've changed a preference. Um, so I do recommend leaving this at the default. And enough about preferences, let's actually start getting into organizing and working with our content. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to navigate the browser, which is this area at the top left of Final Cut Pro.